Let's learn about AI before it takes over the world. AI has been covering the mainstream lately with headlines everywhere about some of OpenAI's latest and greatest developments in AI systems, including DALI 2 and ChatGPT. Today, I want to talk about the different forms of AI so we can have a good understanding of what types of AIs currently exist and what future types we may see exist, and then take a moment to categorize what ChatGPT also belongs to. So let's first start out by talking about the different types of AI systems out there. First off, number one, there are reactive machines. These types of AI systems are capable of only reacting to what they're currently working on and have no memory of past events. An example of this is IBM's Deep Blue, which was a chess playing computer and beat a Russian chess grandmaster and world chess champion in 1997. So we can think of this as a program or computer that has statistical probabilities based on some fixed parameters given to it by its programmers to make decisions on what to do next, not based off of past information or events. Number two, limited memory AIs. These are machines such as vehicles that use sensor data that can then use the feedback from the sensors to make decisions. So think of an autonomous vehicle, much like one that would read street signs or data that's being presented to it right in front. It's going to check and see if that data matches anything in its limited memory model, and then figure out what course of action it needs to make next based on that feedback from sensor data. And the reason it's called limited memory is, is because this type of model does not retain any information once the feedback data has been acted on. I like to think of these two types as reactive AI types because they're technically reacting to whatever's going on in front of them with very little or no memory of past events to make better decisions and probabilities based on past information. Moving on to number three is called theory of mind. Now this is where things start getting a little trippy because these types of AI systems are able to understand and act on states of other entities and then make decisions. So an example of this one might be some virtual chatbot or, or customer service agent that can respond based on the emotion of the customer. So if someone's mad writing into a chatbot, the chatbot realizes and sympathizes with the person that is typing on the other end and makes decisions based on emotional state. Basically, at this point, we're kind of going into the territory of being able to use AI to interact with humans. Number four is general AI or artificial intelligence. And in short, this system model is known as AGI and basically is a AI system that can perform human-like tasks and be performed in a wide range of applications or what AIs consider problem domains. So some examples of general AI may include something like the Boston Dynamics Atlas robot, where it can perform many tasks with advanced dexterity skills, perception of the real world, and has to problem solve in the real time. Although those robots are still limited in their capacity, they can start interacting with the real world much like humans can. But before we move on to the next two, types of AI systems, make sure to hit that like button so other people can also get a good understanding of what types of AIs there are and think about subscribing below. For more AI and programming material, let's talk about number five, which is known as narrow AI. Some people call this weak AI, which are AIs that are trained and designed to perform individual tasks, or they just lack the ability to perform general tasks. Think of these as assistance, much like Siri, Alexa, or the Google Assistants, these are examples of the narrow AI system. And they're really just trained to do specific things like processing language to give you search results. And finally, the last, but probably the scariest type of AI is the self-aware AI. Now to our knowledge, this one does not actually exist, but this is the type of AI, which is aware of itself and surroundings so it can truly make decisions by itself and hopefully not the ones to just straight out end humanity in some sort of a singularity, which is what's constantly represented in most, in most media, but hopefully we never get to that portion. Anyways, since a lot of us are familiar with chat GPT at the moment, let's actually discuss GPT version three and which one of these six types GPT is considered. First off, GPT just stands for generative pre-trained 
transformer and then they slap on a three at the end because I believe it's the third generated model. Now you can take a moment and go down in the comment section and put what number you believe chat GPT belongs to when it comes to AI systems that we've reviewed. And then I'll give you an answer in a moment. All right. Do you have your answer yet? Well, before I give it to you, I want to give you some more information about chat GPT. What chat GPT is mainly trained to do is to generate text, specifically human-like text. It has a massive data set that it was trained on. And because of this massive data set, it basically leaves things indistinguishable from text written by a human. And now that it's getting trained with even more and more input with the research model currently free to everybody, it's only going to get better at this. And it can do a bunch of things such as translation, summarization, answering questions, or even generating code as we all know. But if you pick number five, which is the narrow AI or weak AI, you're correct. This is the family or AI system group that chat GPT belongs to. And now you can see why, because it is a very specifically trained and designed AI system that performs an individual or general task, which is talking back to humans and supplying them with information that they're asking about. It's quite fascinating to see some of these AI systems emerge. I'm sure that we'll be actually getting newer systems as we're discovering how to use AI software and, and how to better train it. So the next decade or so is going to be quite amazing to learn more about AI. Let me know what you think about this type of video in the comment section below. Smash that like button for me if you haven't already. Make sure to subscribe below if you've made it this far, you might as well. And I'll catch you in another video about AI. Thanks for watching.